Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty shaker gift bag. So you can see there all the lovely sequins that move around in the window. Now the idea is, it, you know, whatever's in there would be wrapped or we'll have some tissue around it that would complement the gift bag. So obviously it doesn't give away the gift, but I just thought what a fun way to just you know, change up a, a normal gift bag really. This one also folds flat, so I need to start building up my stash of gift bags again. I tend to do this, I kind of do a, like a, a run of gift bag tutorials just to build up my own personal stash um, and try and bring new, you know, kind of ideas for you guys. So yeah, this one I haven't done a shaker gift bag before, and I think even this fold flat size I haven't done before either. So this can be added to the playlist of all the other fold flat gift bags. So if you do like this, um, concept here of being able to store them away which I know many of you do then I will share up the playlist here somewhere um, and it will have all the other ones that I have that do this fold flat because it's perfect if you like to create like I do um, but maybe a little bit limited on space then these are perfect because you can store them away easily okay so today I'm going to be using a paper pack by the craft consortium this is the herbarium which I have used before for the pop-up box card I think it was. So this is the um, the paper pack here, it's beautiful, like I said it's called the Herbarian. Um, you've got just absolutely gorgeous papers here. Um, lots of you know lovely things to fussy cut. I bought this as a bundle from Craft Stash. I'll share the links to that below because you can get the stamps, two stamp sets and the beautiful little bronze embellishments as well to, to use with it. They're like a little trowel, a little spade um, scissors I think it might have been actually but anyway all that will be in the links below but that's the one I'm using today so I've gone ahead and done loads of parts to it I'm going to talk you through everything step by step as I always do but things like making flowers and you know preparing my sentiments and things like that I've done off camera because you know everybody's going to kind of have something something different anyway so the papers I'm choosing today is this gorgeous one here with all these teacups and if you can see that all the teacups have got a like a gloss coating over the top of them so again I just thought that was really nice Nice to use for a gift bag and it'd be lovely to maybe give some really special tea or a nice teacup itself would fit inside this this gift bag so you're going to need two pieces of the same size so these measure nine and a half by twelve okay so two pieces that size you're going to score all the same apart from one um, extra score line okay so first of all you're going to score at six and nine then rotate your cardstock and score again at three. And you're going to do that on both pieces. Okay, so I've already done that. Then on one of the pieces, where you've scored at three, I'm going to use the one that I've done it on. So where you've scored at three, you want to also score at four and a half all the way down. Then rotate it back again, and you're going to score at seven and a half down to that four and a half inch score line that you just done. Okay, and then on the other one, so you would have scored at six and at nine, and then you would have scored at three. Flip it over, and you want to score at four and a half, go past the first score line that you will have, and go down to the second. Okay, because it folds flat, the folded line, so the one where we've just on that, that first one, we scored right the way across, that's this fold line here. By not scoring all the way across on the second one will mean you won't get a score line through your front piece. You don't want this score line that would be roughly around about there. Okay, so you just want to score at four and a half, past the first score line, just to the second, so that your side can fold. Okay, it will all make sense when it comes together. Then flip it back over again and pop it back in so it's in that nine and a half um, length at the top. And you're again going to score at seven and a half down to that first score line. Okay, so what you should really have now is with your two pieces, is you will have one where it's got a whole big area here. You can just make out my score lines just coming down here, but this is all completely free whereas on this one that same large area will have this score line running here and also your score line running along here as well like I said when we come to fold it all it will all make sense and for those of you that have made these fold flat bags you know you will know exactly what you've got to do okay next you need to do another 
couple of score lines. So where you scored at seven and a half down to the first score line, this is your side. What I'm going to do is actually burnish it all because that way I think it's going to help you see it a lot easier. So this one here, so this is the one where I've just got that large area. I've got my base score line here and I've got my sides there. Where you scored at seven and a half, which I would just roughly bring in here as well. So you can see all the score lines coming together. That's that nine inch score line. This is the seven and a half and this is the six. That seven and a half will meet up with the, this score line here. Whether it's the one that goes right the way across or the one that just goes partly across one side. You basically, from the bottom of that seven and a half inch score line, you want to score across from the score line down to the bottom left and bottom right of that rectangle shape that it would have formed. So again, let me just fold that all in. And then I'm also going to cut into this. I'm doing all this just so it's easier for you to see. I'm going to take some wedges off of that. And I'm going to remove that. Again, I'm going to talk you through all this on the next one when we cut that, because you cut them exactly the same. I just want you to be able to see. So this is what you will have. This is your base. That's the large base. This is our tab that's going to come around like so. Here you will have this rectangle piece where that score line at four and a half, we just done to that, that one. We didn't go all the way across on this particular piece. And there's that seven and a half inch score line that comes down to meet it. Where it meets it, I've scored down to there and then down to there, all within that little rectangle. And basically what that means now is once that's all attached, you can see how that folds and that gives you your fold flat kind of mechanism, I guess. Okay, so that's all that is there. That's what that, that triangle does. So yeah, just within the rectangle that is above that tab here, you'll have that rectangle part. So I'm gonna do it again on this one here and we can get that again all scored. So. I'm going to burnish first of all. So this one here, I've got the two score lines. So this one here, I've got my base score line and then I've got that four and a half score line that went right the way across. So this one, you're doing those two rather than just that little one that we had on the other. And then where I've got my seven and a half score line, it comes down to me and you'll see there's that three inch score line. And then I'm going to fold this one back that way and that's that four and a half inch score line which goes all the way across. There's the seven and a half which comes down there. Again, this is the side. So within that rectangle here, this small rectangle that you have, again, come down where that seven and a half inch meets it and you're just gonna score across like that. And then this one here. Do revert to my other tutorials. I do share some templates in those ones. Once you've done these, the, the actual kind of, um, the scoring is the same for any one you do. Obviously the measurements will be different, but the process is exactly the same for any fold flat bag. So once you've mastered it, it's very, very straightforward. But I do appreciate this is quite a busy paper that I'm using for this one today. But um, do look at the other ones because I do, um, I'll put the one specifically now which has a template and then you'll be able to understand a bit more what I'm doing but now you can see I've got my triangle feature there again so that is the bottom of this seven and a half score line and then I just go across within that rectangle okay so then what you want to do because I quickly done the cutting on the other one but you're going to cut up that one so that's your base this is our tab and then you'll have another score line here. You're gonna cut up that one so it just meets that again, and then just remove that and just cut it on an angle so you're creating a little wedge there. And then on this larger tab, I'm gonna take a couple of wedges off of each side, like so. Okay, so now you've got this large tab here. I'm gonna take a little bit off the top of that as well. So this is your back. You will have your half inch tab and a mountain fold. Then you'll have your seven and a half inch score line and that will be a valley fold. And then you will have that six inch score line and that will be again a mountain fold. And then along this bit here, you will have that score line and then your base score line. Okay, and again, if I bring that all around, you will see once it all folds down, it will go that way. 
and it will all fold flat. Okay. So with your one where you haven't got that score line going all the way through there to so your front, your nice plain piece, this is the one that we're going to start to create the shaker element. Now you don't have to do the shaker at all and if you want to you may not want to do your shaker completely see-through so you may back yours so if you look my one there has got the acetate goes right the way through and you can see the inside and because I'm using double-sided paper it's really nice you can see the lovely pattern it's like little um, herb jars that are inside there as well so it all ties in really nicely but if you wanted to you can just put another nice paper behind the second piece of acetate you don't have to have it on both Okay, so I've gone for a four and a half inch circle. Now I am using my trusty X-Cut circle cutter. If you don't have this, you can use a die, you can use a dinner plate, anything like that. You can obviously draw a pencil, um, you know, circle and then cut it out. But I just love this for this reason. It's just so easy to cut. Also a square window would be easy as well because you can just put your die down, a square die, draw around it with a pencil and then cut that with your cutting knife and that would be a really easy um, shape to cut. So have a play around but I'm going to now cut my circle. So I've already got my little um, marker here and I've just moved it so it's at the four and a half marker okay so those of you that have this you just want to pop it so where it's got the number four because it's not I guess it's a little bit different to what you usually it, I think I would prefer it if they did mark every inch so you got a four but then they go straight to six It'd be nice if they marked the five there so I'm in between where that five would be I've just popped my little doodah just there okay so I've left quite an area free here because once I cut my circles out, this kind of piece hanging down is actually the centre of this circle. And I thought um, rather than wasting it, I'm going to use it to decorate um, my gift bag. So my circle, I actually start from the top um, at about three and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to pop my ruler down here and with a pencil, I'm just going to roughly just mark there because it's plastic. I can't really do my pencil mark there because I can rub that out. But that's three and a quarter in, in three and a quarter inches. So my circle is going to roughly take my back off here. So I'm going to roughly be there, and then I need to make sure that this sits in the middle of where the folded set. So ignore the side. You're working within this area. Okay. So ignore all of this folded piece. So I'm going to bring line that up roughly so I want this to be in the middle of this section so I know I need to come across a bit here and then just to make sure I've got it pretty central so I've got one and a half there and then I've got oh when I move that no so I need to come across so now I'm looking at one and five eighths and one and five eighths so I'm happy with that I think I'm roughly by that pencil mark there so then I can go in now and cut my circle I will share links to this. I think the guy, or I say guy, but the, the store that I've been linking to, I think he might well have sold out. Um, so I need to find um, some other stores. But I also know that there's another company that has a very similar one. So again, I will link that one in. But it's brilliant. You have to have it in your craft room. So it's so handy. Right, there is my window. Now one thing I will also stress is you need to make sure, because what will happen is this second piece eventually is going to be stuck down here. You want to make sure that whatever size circle you have, you can't see that tab coming through. So that half an inch, this area here is more than half an inch so just make sure that you give yourself space there to be able to stick this over that piece there's nothing worse you go to stick it down then you get this bit poking through here okay so that's my piece done there then what you want to do is with the um yeah with your still keep this at the same size and you want to go and cut two more circles so basically the inside one here is four and a half then I move my dial to five and a quarter so pop it down with the four and a half cut your circle leave it down there don't move it undo this and move it up to five and a quarter and then cut again and that will give you this ring okay and you'll need two of them which will give you two of these center pieces which are going to be folded in half and create that detail on top you might not want to use these it's not you know essential but I just thought rather than waste them but then you will have these rings so whatever it is you're using um, whether it's a side plate or anything like that 
cut it and then you need to do another circle slightly bigger around it to give you your two rings here. Now I've already gone ahead and I've popped some red tape on the back of mine and you also want to go and cut two pieces of acetate that are the same size as the larger size that you cut. So the five and a quarter these are. Well, I think I ended up cutting them just slightly shy just so they don't hang over the edge but that's what you, you want to be working towards. So you'll see now what's going to happen is, is that's going to stick over there like so. So basically it's framing our acetate and it means it can sit over this perfectly like so. So I've prepped everything, so I've put my double-sided tape on these. Also, you may only need one piece of acetate if you don't want to back. So whatever um, size is of this, you'll have one in acetate and one in pattern paper or plain paper, for example. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. First of all, with one piece of acetate, flip this over. I've already gone over and made sure that this is really stuck down well. And you're going to stick this so it covers there okay and I'm just going to go around and just really stick that down you can see all the air bubbles come out of it and it goes quite darker which means it's all stuck down nicely so now the reason I said to cut two of these is because you can stick that over the inside and just looks a bit neater you don't have to if you want to leave it like that no one really is going to see it but that's why I've also done the two so you know, at the beginning when I say to cut two, once you've seen this bit now, you might think, well, actually, I don't, I'm not bothered about the inside. So then this one here, focus on the inner circle of the ring, and then that will sit nicely around there, like so. Okay. So that's all the inside kind of prepped now. I can flip this back over. And what we're going to do is pop them to one side. I don't need those quite yet. I'm going to stick this ring onto this piece of acetate, so the top side of the acetate. So you just want to make sure that you get the outer part, because it's the acetate's slightly shorter. So again, just spend some time, just don't rush it. Just make sure that's all covered. And I've put red tape on this side, but I've just realised I actually don't need to because what we're going to do is we're going to put our foam on this piece, the foam adhesive, to give it the dimension to allow us to pop the sequins inside. So I have got some strips that I've already prepared. Again, anybody new to my channel, this is some wax paper or greaseproof paper, and this is your foam um, here, like so. And I basically just stick it on like so and then I can cut my own strips for my shaker cards so this works out a lot cheaper for me to do you know I like to make shaker cards a lot I don't make them obviously every day but I really like this little way and you can cut them to any size you want as well but because it's grease proof it now allows you to peel it off the back there but it means it's a lot easier to manage so I'm just going to trim that piece off these all go in my little drawer where I keep them all together so now even though I've got sticky already on there I need to stick this on top but you're going to get your foam like so and just stick it on there and start working it around like so and don't worry if the um that you know the the backing paper on top starts to buckle it's because you're kind of you know working it around this circular shape once you take that backing paper off it will you know flatten so don't worry it's not going to cause any lumps or anything on your project now that is going to go over there and obviously you then you've got that little bit of height to be able to fill this with our sequins and things like that which is what we're going to do next so I am going to go for those real emerald, yeah, that emerald green colour here. So I'm going to tip these, or I need to do that one. I'm going to tip them all on to that area there. So all within the acetate, and I'll just kind of spread them out a little bit. Just want to make sure they're going to be able to move around like so. And then take your backing off of this piece here, like so, and then. If you've got any kind of pattern, I guess, on that, make sure it's the right way. Make sure there's no bits in there. And, and then carefully stick that down 
making sure the inner frame lines up with the inner frame of the one below, like so. So hold your breath and stick it down. <laughs> okay, so now there's your shaker. And it's obviously nice and neat on both sides. And then you can see there. And I actually like it when they kind of stick and grip on because if you look at this one here, it's all kind of gripped all around the top there but I, I like it. I think it just frames it really nicely. So you can add um, the embossing buddy powder or cornstarch into that if you don't want anything to stick, but I actually do want mine to kind of, you know, catch into places um, because I like it. So there already you can see now it's starting to find little sticky bits on the side and sticking to it. So next we can start putting it all together. So I have got some red tape. So on the back piece, so this is the piece where you've got your four and a half score line that goes all the way across as well as that three inch score line. I'm going to run some red tape all the way along there and just again make sure it's all nice and stuck down. Take the backing off. What I might do, because I think this is going to catch ever so slightly with my frame underneath. So I'm just going to cut because I've got a little bit there where I haven't covered it with tape anyway so I can just cut that off. I wouldn't go any less than quarter of an inch. Make sure you've got at least a quarter of an inch tab. But now I can stick this without it catching with that frame underneath. So I'm going to stick that. You want to make sure you get your score lines here. So these are my base score lines. Make sure they're lined up so it all folds nicely like so. And then just run it all the way up. And there we go. And if I flip it over, it's just caught a little bit there. But what I can do is grab my pokey tool. I just need to lift it up. There we go. Okay. So now that looks really neat from the inside as well as the outside. Like I said, you don't have to put that frame on there, so don't worry. Okay, so that's all of that piece. Then you want to flip it over and you're going to put some tape along this tab here. Again, just take off your backing and then fold that one over right the way over it and it should line up perfectly. Again, make sure your base is stuck down first because you can always kind of trim the top, but get your bottom part lined up first. And then I'm gonna move that over this side so it doesn't damage my shaker part and just make sure that's all nice and stuck. And there we have it. So already now you can see the gift bag coming together and then you want to stick everything down. So what I like to do first is pop my back piece down, then pop in my sides and then stick that down. So when you look inside you've got a really nice base without the tabs showing. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue to these here on each side and stick them in and then I'm going to add glue to this one here. And then flip it all over and then you can go in with your ruler and just kind of, you know, run it over the top there just to make sure that glue's stuck down. Okay, so now you have your gift bag. So it's really nice at the minute, just kind of a paper bag style um, in terms of, you know, how it closes. So you could put a peg on there if you wanted to. Um, you know, it's up to you how you want to do your fastening. But I have done something a little bit different. So with the two circles that you would have had from in the inside of your frames that you cut. These ones here, I'm just gonna fold in half. I'm gonna do it that way so I get the pattern. So that one's gonna be one that way and then I can have, um, how do I wanna do these ones? I'll do this this way. So just fold them in half, okay, like so. So I'm gonna have, one of them's gonna go inside like that, okay. And then the other one is going to go over that there. So at the minute they are kind of more decorative, um, but I do think it kind of pulls everything together once we've added. You can see there once the bow's on there um, and everything. So what you want to do is the front one we're just going to stick down normally. So I'm just going to add some glue along this one and then just pop that in and just make sure that you get it nice and lined up before I completely stick it down. So that's just under three quarters, just under three quarters. So again, I'm happy with that. And then stick it down. Okay, so that's the front one. And then with the back one, 
So you folded it in half, open it up, you then want to cut a slit in the centre. So I'm going to mark the middle, which is two and a quarter. Okay, so that's there. And then I have got this piece here, which measures 11 by one and a half. So I need to make this slit one and a half inches long because this is going to slide inside there. So you can see here, that's actually concealed inside. I didn't open that up at the beginning, but you'll see in a minute. Again, this is all optional once you see how I do it, but I do like to really kind of show you lots of different ways to do your bags. So from the center there, because it's one and a half, I want to come out each side at three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to line up my three quarters of an inch there with the pencil mark that I've just drawn, and then do a pencil mark at the end there, and then I just go to one and a half there, okay? So now I've got a one and a half area there, and that's what I want to cut. So I've got my cutting knife, and I'm just going to cut from that one. And I'm actually going to remove the score line. So I'm going to remove that bulk, so then I'm going to come across on the other side of the score line, So and then just cut across, and that will remove it. Okay, so you can now see I've cut that one and a half inch section there. Okay, and basically what that now means is I can get this piece. So I've just gone and used my ruler or a pair of scissors, anything, and just curled it like so. You want to pop the two together about half an inch. Okay, so I'm just going to pop my glue there about half an inch and just stick them together. Quarter an inch, anything like that, but don't do anything more than that because I think it gives you a nice handle size. And you're going to pop it in there and you want to have half an inch coming in, like so. Okay, so again, choose a side. I'm just going to pop some glue there. And just stick that down. Make sure it's nice and straight, but I've got about half an inch in there. Okay, get rid of that glue on the front, like so. So now that is going to stick over the back side, but look, it's all nice and covered and concealed. So next you want to add glue over to, so next I'm just going to cover all of this now with glue, both sides, like so, and make sure I've got the right side facing out, and then I'm going to pop it in the back, okay, again, and then if you just close it up and make sure the front one here lines up with the back, which it does. So you can stick that all down. So now you have this piece, but it's all really neat. And then it's going to be like so. Now, you're obviously probably thinking, but sound the handles on the back, how that's already open. Now, you, there's a few ways you can do this. You can add a Velcro dot in there if you want and seal it up. You could put that handle, that side onto here and have one side on there. So it's kind of a, an arched handle that you just open and then you've got kind of tissue hanging out. What I've done is I'm going to hole punch there and I fed the ribbon through both pieces. Okay, so I've got my I've got my cropper dial here and I'm just coming in on the back and I'm eyeballing this but you can kind of see there where I've just done my hole punch. So I'm punching both holes within this one and a half inch section. So again I'm going to come in here and I think about there. There we go. Okay, so they're both within this section. And then if you fold it up, and then you can do a pencil mark on the other side, and that way you know you're going to get them lined up. So I can see my pencil marks there, and then I'm just going to come in this side here. Okay, so there's my two holes here, and my two holes on the back. Next, I've got some pretty ribbon here, and starting from the back, you want to come in there and then go right through to the front. And then with the other end, you're going to go across and pop it in that one. And go right through to the front one there. And then it will close it up. And then it's easy to get into once you're obviously under your bow. So it will be like so. And it just closes up, I think, really nicely. It's just unusual, and that's what I like to make. That's my thing. So <laughs> there are many ways to make it if you don't want to do it that way, but I do think it looks quite cool. So, And I've done that similar way with my... Um, I think I called it like the 
the Mary Poppins bag or something like that that I'd done. So I'll share that link up here as well. You may want to check that out because that was cool. Okay, and then I'm going to tie my bow. Okay, and then I'm going to trim these pieces off and I'm actually going to trim them so it's completely flat. And this is optional, um, like so. And then what I've gone and done, you'll see here, is I added little pieces on the ends. Because you know you sometimes get those lovely decorative metal ribbon ends. Well, I've just done these in the matching cardstock. So cut them straight and then I've just cut, so whatever width your ribbon is, and then I've done it by half an inch. And then I'm just going to fold that in half. So I've got a quarter of an inch on each side like so. And then because I'm sticking to fabric, I'm going to use the red tape. So I've got the very tiny thin one here, which is the, I think it's about, it's just over one eighth of an inch. Okay. Now one thing I will say, if you're going to do these is make sure, first of all, that when you undo your bow and pull the ribbon almost so it doesn't come through the holes that you've got room to put whatever you're putting inside because once you add these onto the end you can't that ribbon won't go back through those holes okay so once I pop this on I will show you what I mean so just stick one down first on one side and then just fold over the other half so you are sandwiching the ribbon in between but I think that gives a really nice little finish and ties everything together. So now when I undo that bow, like so, I can open up my gift bag really far, like so, but still get the gift inside. But see, they won't go back through those holes now. So do bear that in mind, whatever you cut your ribbon length to, make sure it's going to give you the room to be able to, you know, open and close the gift bag. Okay, and now it's just down to decorating. So I'm just going to lean my bag there so you can see. So I've already gone ahead and cut these flowers. Now I did use this stamping up punch here. I don't know what one it was from but anyway got that one. So I've gone and cut them and just kind of you know screwed them up a bit and everything. Stuck two together and popped a little gem inside and I'm going to stick the three of them like something like that. Very similar to what I've done and then I've already gone ahead and cut matching little leaves from the same cardstock and those are just going to be all nestled in amongst it. So I get something like that. And I'm also going to stick the happy birthday on top as well. Okay, so there is my gift bag finished. I realised that my happy birthday was actually really dark and I'd actually done on this one here. It was the same colour as the flowers. So I just changed it. So I've got the same colour there now, but trying not to get the glare in but you can see there how nice that all falls you can see the inside paper of the bag because I've used double sided so it's got a nice obviously everything all matches um, I've added all my leaves there and the flowers and then you've seen how the bag opens but also just make sure it all folds flat so in order to do that if it's the first time you just basically you're going to be pushing against that four and a half inch score line that you scored you push in that and if you've scored and burnished all of these triangle ones perfectly it will all fold nice and flat okay but they do store away much much easier so there you have it guys a little bit unusual in terms of the fastening and just having the shaker element but i always like to try and bring you other ways to just yeah take your gift bags to that next level i think they look great i'm really really pleased with these love the papers love that little detail on the ribbons and of course the shaker element is just really fun i think so yeah i hope you've liked it i hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial if you have please give me a thumbs up i really do appreciate it and i'll be back again soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye